Hey, hey. What's going on? <sighs> Nothing much. What's going on with you? Nothing much. This episode was good. This was a lovely end to a nice series. Eight episodes done. Everything wrapped up in a cute little bow. <laughs> I just enjoyed it because it was just everything kind of flowed together. Like you, like you could ref, you reference to earlier in the season. It was just a very good. Um, to me, it was a very good overall season because it had a good story arc with yeah. a little something to keep you holding on for the next season, which I thought was good. Yeah, you felt like the first season wrapped up nicely, but then you know there's more to come afterwards. Mm -hmm. I think that's what makes it such a good show, at least yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. And as you guys come into the room, um, please hit the thumbs up button. Um, we are talking about The Bling Empire, season one, episode eight, Will You Marry Me? And this was the finale. Um, a quick summary. The show opens up with Kevin and Kane still in uh, South Carolina, getting that phone call from that mysterious lady. Um, then they head back to LA where they break the news to Kim and her mother. Um, then we see Christine and uh, Cherie getting pedicures. Then the gang goes on a shopping trip to Vegas. Um, we get to learn a little bit more about Jamie. Um, then it's Javon's 100 day, I guess you could call it a birthday party, but it's like a 100 day celebration mm -hmm. um, for the baby. Um, then we see an interesting scene where Kelly comes clean to Kevin and Kane. Um, Kim tells Christine to learn from her mistakes. Uh, then we see Christine and Lauren being shady. Um, Anna has a heart to heart with uh, Kevin and Kane. Uh, then it's Cherie and the big question. Um, Kim and Kevin uh, make amends. And I think there's new beginnings there. And then you see at the end, um, like the cast, they do individual, you know, wrap ups of their season. Right. Okay. So back in Charleston, Kevin's on the phone with this lady. She's Tony's wife. Mm -hmm. but we, kind of, we kind of figured that, but we just didn't have confirmation. Yeah. But it was good to see that. Uh, she said that. He died two years ago. Yeah, I feel bad. I feel so bad. I'm like, no. You know what went through my head? The PI when he said the best possible outcome is if he's dead. Yes. Damn. I was like, it's the best possible outcome, I understand, but like, that's not the outcome we want, though. I know. I know. But after hearing it, and then what if he didn't want to see her? Right. He was alive. That would have been even more devastating to her. Yes. That's, you know? that's so true. That's so, so, so true. Yeah. But it seems like he had kidney failure and ha eventually had a heart attack and died. Mm -hmm. But um, his wife said that he spoke about Kim all the time. Well, first of all, she said he spoke about his children. How many more kids he got out there? Yeah, that's what I was looking at, too. I was like, um, children. Yeah. Okay. I'm hoping that was like a like lost in translation thing. But, you know, at least he thought about Kim over the years. Yes. You know, that's something that she could take comfort in. Like he didn't just forget about her. You know no. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he didn't. And that's a good thing. That's something good that she can take with her and give her some closure that he, did, he didn't He did forget her. Yeah, he, he didn't just like be like, you know, I'm just going to throw her out or anything. He like, he just, he still remembered her. And that's, mm -hmm. that's more than some people get. I'm kind of glad that they decided to do this without her. Yes. So that 
a stranger isn't breaking this news to her, but her two friends are breaking this news to her. That was, my, to be completely honest, that was my main thing. I was like, at least it's them doing it, mm-hmm. and not a random person she doesn't know. Yes. Because I think, if, I think if it was a random person, I think it might have devastated her even more, to mm-hmm. be honest. Mm-hmm. And so the boys fly back to L.A., and the next scene, they go straight out to Malibu to um, Kim's uh, parents' place, um, and they tell Kim and Kimmy uh, what they discovered in mm-hmm. South Carolina. And she was a little angry that they took that information and went ahead. Mm-hmm. But I think when they break the news to her, having her mom there to help yes. her through it and having, like I said, them there to be the ones to tell her, um, I think that really cushioned the blow. Yeah, because she had she had like her whole like pretty much her whole support system there. Um, except for stepfather, but I, mm-hmm. I just thought like the, in this situation, I think that was the best case scenario for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like this this episode opened up really, really, really heavy, um, but it Great. lightened up as as we moved along. So you know, bless her heart, condolences, and you know. He thought of you. That's your closure. Oh, yeah. That's what you wanted. That's what you That's wanted. Amazing. Yeah. And the best possible scenario happened. So good for them. Um, next, we see Christine and Cherie getting pedicures. And they're talking about babies and um, like all of the clothes that, that baby mm-hmm. G has. And did you notice that when Christine said I could give you all of his yeah, winter clothes, that. Cherie was like, "Yeah, no." <laughs> she had that look like, "Damn, what are you talking about, Hammy?" You now, are you serious? I guess that just doesn't fly, right? I don't know. She's like, "She's like, we're not having this." No. Yeah, I'm okay. I can afford to buy clothes. <laughs> right. She's like, "She's like, I'm good. Thank you." She's like, I'm good. Thank you. Appreciate you. But no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was cute. Um, but it, it, Christine is one of those characters that just can't help. Because you you have to know. She has to know, like, that's not acceptable. But yet you're still doing it. Why are you giving her right. hand-me-downs? She doesn't need it. We're trying to give her hand-me-downs. Yeah. Um, let's see. Then... Chris, um, Cherie floats the idea of proposing to Jesse. Mm-hmm. I don't think Christine liked it. Christine's like, yeah. girl, you go against every cultural norm. Now this, how desperate are you? <laughs> hey, Cherie's like, I'm going to go get my man, and that's just pretty much what it is. And that's what she did. And I was like, you know what? Sometimes you have to take control of your own destiny. Mm-hmm. And that's what she did. She's yeah. like, I think she's, she was at the point like, I need to know if, he, if he's going to be with me um, for the long haul, or if he's not, I need to know now, and so I can make my exit. Yeah, yeah, and she knows Jesse. Like in her heart, if she knew he would say no, I don't think she would ask. Agreed. Uh, no woman will put her in that put themselves in that, knowingly put themselves in that position, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And he seems like a good provider, yes. a good partner. And a good dad. Why wouldn't she want to like marry him? Yeah, that's my that's my thing. Like, why wouldn't she just go ahead and be like, you know what? I'm just gonna do this, and we'll see what happens. And I thought I think it was the right to me. It was the right call. Yeah, but you know, in the back of her head, she still has those little whispers of you know their culture and that. Mm-hmm. not being appropriate but good for her she had the cojones she went ahead and she's gonna go and get her man and she did mm-hmm. now so to me that was the biggest thing like she did what she wanted to do she got the answer she needed and mm-hmm. I, I was super happy for her mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so next we see like the group like there's this company that invites wealthy asians to come and shop in vegas and they all got like, an invitation. Okay. <laughs> I was in there like, okay, there's a company. Like, this is, oh, 
all right. Do what I you need do. to get a job there. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, and they go balls to the walls shopping. Like, dang. I, I, it, this is um, some serious shopping. I've never seen anything like this. Oh, and on the flight, E is for Hermes. Really? No. How are you a model? Oh, I was I was laughing so hard. Hermes, okay. he, he was he was he was so proud. Yeah, I'm he's like, like, isn't it E Hermes? Yeah, uh huh. And he's like, is the E silent? I was like, <laughs> is the E silent? Yes. <laughs> Kevin, we love you, but he is not silent, sir. They were playing this stupid game. Um, do the alphabet, and you name a designer for every letter in the alphabet. And they got to E, and brilliant Kevin is like, E is for Hermes. And he, they're like, bussing out laughing. But when he said, but like, remember with B, he's a boss. And they're like, oh, that's good. Like, it's the lower end, but okay. <laughs> I was like, Christine, just, that was just too funny. I laughed. He's like, he's the perfect person to actually like um, bring these super wealthy people back down to earth. I yeah. think sometimes they get a little bit too full of themselves, but then Kevin says something stupid or asinine and it just like brings everybody back down to a level mm -hmm. playing field. It's hysterical. I wish they would have shown him like actually shopping, like how they were in the Chinese uh, store. Right. And he said, like, oh no, that, you know, diamond tiara is not mine. I have the business they, card. It's free. <laughs> have you gotten to? Oh, we haven't gotten to that part yet where they asked Jamie, like, does her, her parents support with her influencer? Blah, blah, yes, blah. That's next when they're, that when was they're at lunch. Funny. That was hilarious. And she's like, yeah, like, I made like 40,000. And Christine's like, 40,000? Kay's like, 40,000? Christine's like, that's not even a full outfit. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but <laughs> Christine did tell yeah. her, keep that job. Keep that side mm -hmm. hustle because apparently um, Kane is now on an allowance, but it's an extravagant allowance. Um, yeah. And um, because they want to rein him in and want him to to fit into their plan for him. But he's still out and about. He doesn't care. And Christine, we find out, hasn't spoken to her family in a decade. Like she right. got cut off in college. Like, what happened? Well, again, this is how we're getting breadcrumbs to keep us to tune into season two. I think Christine's yeah. going to be pivotal in season two. But Christine tells her, keep that side hustle going, girl. Um, 40000 might not be a full outfit, but enough of those 40000 you know, right. you'll have a cushion in case your parents decide to, you know, put a leash on you or cut you off completely. Exactly. I thought that was mm -hmm. very good advice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Okay. So they fly back to LA. Um, and everybody's invited to Javon's hundred day party. And Cherie goes all out for this party. Yeah, she there are there are splits of champagne of Moise Chandon. Um, she's got food. She's got the red envelopes. She's dressed in a beautiful red dress. Um, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. All the cars are pulled up outside this place. Everybody's dressed in ball gowns and their best jewelry is out. Oh yeah, yeah. This is this is fabulous. Um, and in case anybody know um, doesn't know, um, in Asian culture, they celebrate the hundredth day of um, after the baby's born because traditionally babies didn't make it past a hundred days. So if they did make it to a hundred days, it was cause for great celebration, and they have carried that on. Um, um, in their culture to this day. So I thought, I think that's like a really cute um, and significant milestone for a baby and for the family. I loved it. 
Everyone had fun. Everyone seemed mm-hmm. to get along. It was a great celebration. The cake was great. <gasps> the cake was gorgeous. Oh my god. But um, okay, so everybody's mingling. Um so Sherry tells Christine she's gonna do it. She's proposing tonight. Christine looks like, oh my god, are right. you serious? Serious? <laughs> And she's like, we just don't do those. Things. She said, look, we just don't do those things. Oh my god, this girl cannot be supportive at all. I just don't understand it. But anyway, she she keeps it quiet. She keeps it quiet. Um, then we see Kelly talking to Kevin and Kane, and she comes clean that she's been seeing Andrew. Mm-hmm. That he like they were making out, but they didn't have sex. Lying still. Yeah, I no. And I don't. I think they're relieved that they that she told the truth, but I still think that they don't believe her that she hasn't Mm-mm. slept with him. Mm-mm. No one's buying that. Kevin needs to move on. <laughs> yep. He needs to move on. And when he threw that glass on the floor near Kane's shoes, Kane nearly smacked him. Right. Kane Kane knows to deal with her, but don't mess up his shoes. Right. (laughs) Okay, so um, Christine goes over to Kim and tries to start mess with um, the pee pump that they found in Anna's um, shower. And Kim tells her, I have no more time for those trivialities. I just found out that my biological father passed away and, and I'm not getting involved in that mess. Find somebody else. And yeah, she, was um, not going for, she did not, she was not going for it. Yes. And um, she, she admits, you know, um, Christine then tells her that she hasn't spoken to her dad, you know, in a long, long time. And Kim tells her point blank period, learn from my mistake, mend those fences before it's too late. Mm-hmm. And that's something that Christine has to think about. Yes. And she, you know, I think she will. I think that'll be a big part of, of season two for her as well. I want I just want to know the reason why they don't speak. But is she's been married to Dr. G now for 12 years because it took her 10 years to have the baby. He's one. Mm-hmm. But yeah. In college. <laughs> If they're traditional, yeah. traditional, I wonder if she, I wonder if there was something in college, that she, a mistake that she made. But does this have anything to do with why she didn't find out her husband's heritage until after the wedding? Yeah, I wonder what that's all about. Something but fishy's in, going on. Yeah, but then college, she met Dr. G after college. So it, had, it can't, be anything, can't be anything to do with him. But what you in college. funny if her parents didn't show up to her wedding? Like, this had to be a big social event. Right. She wasn't talking to her parents for her wedding? No. Because remember, like you said, they've been married 12 years. And what she said, like, what happened to her was in college. And I think she might be a little bit older than 34. No. <laughs> <laughs> because he's if he's forty seven, I think he's forty seven. Isn't right? he fifty something? Didn't Is Blobby something? correct that? I think Ablavi said he was in his fifties. He there's a significant um, age gap between them. Really? Yeah, I think he's older than forties. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, so uh, Christine is 38. Mm. So who's 15 years younger than her husband, Dr. Gabriel, who's 53. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if they're married, if they're if, like, if they've been married like 12, we'll say 12 years, that means she got married at 26. 
which is, hmm. and the issues with their family are pre, pre or in yeah. college. So, yeah. so I wonder what happened. That's sad, but it makes me want to watch next season. Okay, exactly. so we're back at the party. Um, Cherie's kind of like dropping hints about getting married at the table. Um, at Christine and Anna's table, Christine asks, um, asks Lauren to evaluate everybody's jewelry at the table and see who has like the most expensive or whatever. And he says everyone's is, is good with the exception of one that has on um, faux jewelry. And they look so at rough. Kelly. That was so shady. That was like, I was like, wow. Oh my goodness. But it makes sense. She's right. the one who lost everything when she was with her first husband and has had mm -hmm. to rebuild. So, and Anna's always taking her shopping. I, I, I can see her wearing paste. I really can. Yeah. So I'm you sure know? they. Could, I'm sure they. Did, I'm sure they didn't keep, get to keep anything. Yeah. You know, and if she. If she did, it's probably like wanted to make reparations or something, you know? Exactly. So, yeah. So they, they pinpoint her as having on um, fake jewelry. So that's kind of, it's to be expected from Christine. Um, yeah. And so then we see Anna talking to Kane and Kevin. And she tells them that what they did by going to South Carolina was amazing. And she wanted to like really thank them and appreciate them for what they did um, for Kim. And, um, and in turn, they're like, why don't you talk to Kim? So they're still trying to, to make, right. make them friends again. And she concedes and Kim doesn't want to come over because she just, she's really trying to avoid mess. Right. <laughs> but she eventually does come over and Anna tells her that she's sorry, which I thought was like so mature. I love Anna. I love Anna. Anna's, Anna's the best. You know, she, um, she tells her that she's sorry for her loss. And, you know, then Kim apologizes. She gives a sincere apology mm -hmm. for going in her bathroom and 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 being disrespectful to her home. And they hug it out. And, you know, she says that with the news about her dad, she's really making an effort to be a better person. And I love that. God. Yeah, because she wasn't a very nice person this season. Um then we see um, Cherie and Jesse get up on the stage and they're like thanking everybody um, for, for coming and for celebrating with their family and little baby Javon. Um, oh, wait, before this, did you see the part where Anna was gifting Jador diamond necklaces? It was hilarious. Like, Cherie's like, no, Anna, no, don't give her yeah, anymore. Yeah, so, and Anna's like, she's, so she's finding them. She's so cute. She's finding them. She has on like these strands of diamond necklaces. Like, <laughs> what do you do? I need an Anna in my life. Right. I need an Anna in my life. Like, if she could just drop one diamond for me, just one. Right. <laughs> Too funny. She is so funny. The blase way that she relates with money and, and possessions is just so foreign to me. I could watch her all day long and think of it as the greatest science experiment. She just crazy. She just living her life. That's all she is in her in her mind, she's living her life. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now we get back to see Sherry and Jesse on the stage. They thank everyone. Um, uh, what did she say? She says something really cute. Um, cute. Um, it's the wish that the baby will 
live for a hundred years. Um, that's the celebration, you know, they're mm -hmm. wishing longevity to the baby. Um, and then she starts going into this speech to Jesse and then asked him to marry her. And she even has a ring. Yes, yeah, she has this jewelry box over here. I was like, I love it. He stutters, he stammers, he drags that moment out. I swear I was gonna reach through my television and like punch him in the head. Right, I'm like, if he says no from all these people, I hope she just leaves him. Oh my God. But Kane, Kane is good. You know, he kind of hems a haws around it. And then Kane screams out and says, did you say yes? And he goes, yes, yes, I said yes. So yay, they're engaged finally. And he says that he has to give her the fairy tale wedding of her dreams. Yep, he does. And we better see that next season. We don't want to wait five years. Right, exactly. That's the thing. Yeah, so... Um, Kane says that he's inspired by Cherie and how she breaks tradition and he's going to start new rel relationships. And you see him taking Lauren's right. number. Bro, that was hilarious. What? <laughs> that was so funny. I, I want to know how this impacts his um, allowance next season. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Kim talks to Kevin um, about her dad and she's thanking him. Um, for doing what he did in South Carolina. And she says that she's sorry for picking on him. And then it seems like they're flirting. So these can they be are. the next hookup. They're a cute, they're a cute couple. I'ma need her to lay off of the the injectables in the lip. <laughs> and yeah, because she's she's looking like a Kardashian. I ain't gonna lie. She oh, she needs to gotcha. like lay off of it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, cute girl. She just doesn't need all that. Um, so yeah, that looks like it's going to be the next cute couple next season. Um, then we have the loose ends and we go through the cast. Kevin says that he feels accepted by his friends, even though he's not on the same financial level. Um, Anna, this is where she puts more jewelry on Jador. And saying that Jador found her treasure, Christine, she's trying to be as loving and forgiving as possible, except to Anna. Um, Anna says that this has been a year for her of trying new things and new experiences. And um, she's gonna live her life to the fullest. Um, Kane says being a friend means going the extra mile for them. It mm -hmm. is the most rewarding thing, um, you know, possible. And it's a part of being something special that he really values in friendship. Um, Kevin, if you can't be rich, at least have rich friends. And Kelly realizes, um, it's hard to find someone you can really have love you and you love in return. And then we see her whole ass go up to Andrew's house. Yeah, not looking. I, I just don't want to see them next season. Next. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm not interested. Everyone else. In that everyone night. else. Everyone else. Yay. Them too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. However. The only way that I can accept it is if Kevin gets together with Kim and she sees what she lost because Andrew's yeah. still treating her like a piece of right. Poop. I can see that. I can see. I can see that happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was it, guys. Season one of Bling Empire, episode eight. Will you marry me? The finale. That this was a good season. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it's what we th we would like from our housewives, but hey, at least we have this. <laughs> so I'm happy. Yes, Ablavi, thank you, thank you, thank you for recommending this show to us. We really appreciate it. We thoroughly enjoyed it. And we're going to look for another something special on Netflix to, to start reviewing. 
If anyone has any suggestions, please put them in the comments below. If you like this review, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be alerted every time we put out new content. Until next time, guys. Bye. Bye.